Like G, this is episode 406 of Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranchy and Calderness. Like, let's get this show on the road, dude. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how would six I, how people work? think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Points. I leads for hero clips brought to you by coolstuffinc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest hero clips, singles, and steel products. Check it out, Scoob. I. <laughs> R- 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 <laughs> Use code DIAL5, man, for like 5% off your cool stuff order. <laughs> Joining me like always in the studio is my friend, Simeon Do. Like, how's it going, Simeon? <laughs> you want a Simi snack? <laughs> right, we're in rate. If only I had like, like a We're going to be in hero click, Sim. Seeds. You believe it's Zim? We're gonna be in Hero Clicks with our good friend the Batman. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Green right okay, bro. <laughs> like, let's play some modern age. Sco- <laughs> hey, Simeon. What's up? How's it going? This is it's a strange intro we just had there. A weird intro. I'm, a... I'm sure we'll get more into that uh, when news <laughs> rolls around. <laughs> but uh, what? What made you happy this week, my man? Uh, what made me happy this week is I finally... So, I signed up for Disney+. Plus. I already had Hulu. And I was hey! like, I'm going to get Disney+, Plus and the Hulu bundle, paying like six-something for Hulu. I was like, can't be too much more to combo it or whatever. And so I signed up, and it actually... I don't know if it's like just a promotional period or something like that. But due to the dis- the discounts that they gave me for signing up or whatever, um, the first couple months are only a dollar more than what my Hulu subscription oh, was. Nice. So it's like seven something, and the Hulu alone was like six. And I, I don't do the Hulu without ads because I'll suffer through it for the half price, whatever. Um, but yeah, so I signed up, uh, got through Book of Boba Fett, um, haven't watched any movies yet. There's a few movies that I really want to see in Canto, so I can talk about Bruno. Uh, yeah, we don't talk about him, though. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I, I started watching What If, so I'm two episodes in. Um, okay. Animation's good. I think the, the stories, uh, I could like give or take with some of them, but it's weird how half of the voice actors are the actual voice actors, and then the other half, Johans, Johan Smith, or whatever, uh, Red Skull, obviously Hugo Weaving was yeah. like played the red skull did a great job did not reprise the role for end game yeah end game um, infinity war was it infinity war okay both of, i mean both of them oh that's true yeah yeah he's, yeah he's there for thanos and the other couple um but yeah did not reprise his role so that was like a different person so i didn't expect him to be the voice actor for red skull but then it was like sebastian stan did bucky's voice but uh, Chris did not do Steve's voice. And so it's, yeah. it's just like a weird hodgepodge of like some, and I, I don't know, maybe it's just like the ones who needed work or maybe it's just the ones who really enjoy their character or they just, you know, were free I mean, right? at the time. At the end of the day, it's like, who can we afford? Do right. want to pay the Robert Downey Jr. price for Robert Downey Jr.? Right, or yeah. Or get someone close enough? And that's, yeah. Uh there's definitely some that like I can absolutely tell it's their voice. And then other ones I have to wait until the credits and I'm like, Oh yeah, that was the same person because the voice, like I did not, could not tell that Sebastian Stan did Bucky's voice. It could have been anyone to me until I saw the credits. And I was like, huh? Okay. <laughs> if he you like say generic so. dude could have been Bucky. He doesn't yeah. say that much in that episode. Well, yeah. and he wasn't so, after watching Falcon Winter Soldier, he gets like the most lines he's ever had in that series. He is a very much different character in that series 
than 1940s Bucky. So 1940s True. Bucky is still like very happy go lucky. So obviously he's doing a different tone of voice and stuff. He's not like the dark, uh, one armed emo kid that he is in Falcon Winter Soldier right. or uh, you know, uh, whatever. But yeah, that made me happy. Cool. That was uh, uh catching up on that stuff, seeing all like the cool, cool animations I haven't seen is gonna be fun. Uh, and now I'm just like debating do i need hbo max to continue watching like doom patrol and all the other cool shows because i think peacemakers on there i don't know it is yeah hey uh i have been enjoying hbo max i i do not pay for it of course i i kind of do be (laughs) borrowing it from somebody else it's also got doctor who a great series from the people across the pond uh i think it's the uh Oh, the, other, the other side Kingdom? of Michigan. Oh yeah, that's something. Pond. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like that. Ish. Podcasting control. Concentrated. Something. Who knows? I don't know what the C stands for. Anyways, uh, well, cool, man. Uh, what made me happy this week? Uh, been playing some video games. I have had a, a Super Nintendo for a while. And I've, I've played on it and stuff, but, like, both the controllers are just so, like, janky. And it's, like, they're, like, the old controllers that came with it. So I, I went out and I bought um, a new one. Like, one that you can get, like, one of those, like, stir, like, record game store places. You know what I mean? Right. You know, the kind. Pop yeah. culture exchange. Yeah. Kind stuff of, like yeah. weird. Yeah. And it's, like, it's just, like, a new controller. It's good. So I've been playing a lot of uh, oh, Tetris 2, Super Tetris, whatever. Super fun. Get on that Elden Meg- Ring they have that uh, no i'd rather kill myself than play <laughs> elden ring um never been a fan of souls games do not care about any of that and i hate that my facebook feed and instagram and twitter feed is all just i just people whining and moaning i, I do can't not buy care. games on release anymore like i mean i could i just i choose yeah. not to it's like hero clicks uh, how often am i gonna play this to not pay yeah. like a super discounted price two years from now and that's that's like that's a lesson i've learned like even like games i was excited for i just and and to be fair i'm falling into that again with um evil dead like i've already pre-ordered the ultimate edition for evil dead i've already wasted 200 dollars on that game and i guarantee it probably won't be a 200 hundred dollar worth game (laughs) i love evil dead i love evil dead so i've got to do it but like then like uh Marvel vs. Capcom 4. I love Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but I was like, I'm still going to wait till Black Friday to pick that thing up for half price. And the only bad thing about that is like the servers are all dead a month or two oh, after release because, right. you know, Marvel vs. Capcom 4 garbage game. You know, it wasn't good. Not not compared to 3. I bought you know, just... Street Fighter 4 on release. And then, I don't oh, remember, like, something was, like, buggy in the game or whatever. Like, something wasn't quite finished, so... I think like six months later, they released Street Fighter Four Ultimate, and <laughs> I was just like, "Ah, I have been I'm fooled again with this." Yeah, I'm just stuck here with my my buggy Street Fighter Four. Yeah, At the very least, um, I waited until I think I waited like two or three years before I bought Street Fighter Five, and like, thankfully, it's a Street Fighter game, so they're just it's always going to have people playing it, which is nice. Um, but got that for like twenty bucks, thirty bucks, which is solid. But um. Yeah, no, uh, I did pick up Mega Man X for like $20. $20. Mega Man X is my all-time favorite Mega Man game. I Super love, love Mega Man X. Um, this is the first time I'm finally getting able to play through it on the uh, SNES. First time I played it, I played it on the Wii when they had it there, and I bought like a special controller that was like a normal one, so I didn't have to use the weird Wii controller. Second time I played through it, I played through it like a phone app they had, which you can okay. probably still get. Um, yeah. But I was like phone controls, obviously, and I just I love Mega Man X, and I'm just so pumped to like finally play it how it was like meant to be played. Clearly, didn't come out for any other system. This is the only system it came out for. Uh, this is the only way to play it in my heart. It's the only. It's really the only way to play it. So I'm I'm pumped. I like I've loved it since like 20, 2012, probably. It's been like ten years since I got into that game, and I'm just I'm excited to finally play through it again. And dang, this version of Tetris is also fun very weird it's very different but sometimes i think i stayed up till like 1 a.m one night just playing tetris which that maybe that's its problem in its own its own right but dang it's fun 
man. Uh, but I did right. not realize there was a competitive Tetris community until I started watching like videos on it. There's yeah. like techniques for getting high scores and stuff. Like it's it's a big deal. I always thought Tetris was just like, oh yeah, I just I clear the rows as best as I can. Yeah, as far as but game. it's like no no no. You set up like a huge block and wait for the the straight block and then you get like the ultra tetris people are weird what are we doing we're we saying what made us happy we want to talk about yeah. like news yeah um Ruh -roh. Ruse. Ruh -roh. like g scoob we're they put us in the hero clicks miniatures game yeah so the big i i don't know the probably the biggest news for i'd say most people and by most people, I mean like the the people that don't poo poo on everyone's favorite stuff, uh, and can just be happy that other people are happy. Uh, the Gamma Trade Show happened this weekend or last weekend, whenever it happened. Um, and then, yeah, the first thing on the docket, we get a slide of DC clicks. What appears to be yeah. DC clicks, mostly oh. DC clicks. First of all, um, let's say what a weird rollout for all the Gamma News because we yeah. saw this hours before everything else. Um, it was like someone took that picture during it. It was like, we got to post this. Yeah. Um, which sucks when they don't wait until it's all over and they don't just like take pictures and like have it in a nice little <laughs> right. post for Simeon and I to finally talk about. So, but yeah, like, so the first slide that we see uh, doesn't even have like a DC emblem has no hero clicks emblem it does say in the bottom corner hero clicks whiz kids confidential uh so we probably shouldn't even be talking about it but here we are yeah. um but it doesn't say this is like a single set it doesn't say if this is actually hero clicks like it's the it could just be one of like those side games that they kind of make it could just be a standalone like starter pack we have no idea but on the left we have three characters from the teen titans go series which uh, you might know as like the chibi, like younger generation of yeah. the Teen Titans series. Uh, they have ginormous heads. Like these put the Tab App heads and Lone Ranger heads to shame. They have huge heads. Um, so we've got Bumblebee, I assume is her name, uh, Starfire, and Robin. I will say dynamic poses, cool little sculpts. I've never seen the show, but I have no issue with these. Next, we have Scooby Doo just sitting in the middle, yeah. being Scooby Doo. Uh, yeah. There, ha there was a crossover episode with the Scooby Gang and Teen Titans Go. I've seen that like little image. Okay. Uh, then we have Dexter flying around. No idea if this is comics based De Dexter or if he appears in like an animated show as well. And then we get a really, uh, like world's finest esque Batman. He's holding a batarang. His cape's like kind of torn looking and like flowing. Uh, very dynamic sculpt, but does not match like the other characters. The, maybe the look Dexter. at all. But yeah, he's, yeah. he's very unanimated, at least in my opinion. He could be from like one of the uh, one of their movies, the animated movies, because those can be pretty dark. But yeah, he's in his classic black and gray uh, aesthetic. So don't know if this is all from the same set. A lot of people are kind of, you know, sky is falling about Teen Titans Go and Scooby-Doo. And by a lot of people, I mean mostly weird people on Realms that hyper-focus on a single slide with six figures and assume that the next set is yeah. just Teen Titans Go. So obviously, if this is all from the same set, it's not all just Teen Titans Go. That's going to be like a sub-theme because Batman right. is there and it's not like Teen Titans Go Batman, if that is even yeah. a thing. Uh, but yeah, you can tell by the size of his head that he's a <laughs> yeah, normal that he's of a Batman. normal character. Uh, yeah, it's exciting to me. Um, people are talking about like Hanna Barbera clicks because obviously, like Scooby Doo falls under um, yeah. a slightly different house. It's still WB. I don't know. DC yeah. Comics is going through a weird phase right now, and we don't know exactly what's happening, but. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, anyone jumping the gun they're saying it's gonna be a full whatever Teen Titans Go set or saying it's gonna be oh whoa, does this mean we get the Flintstones? Needs to like, whoa, chill out a little bit. It's probably just gonna be like stuff that has very you know, intertwined history with like DC or DC animated stuff, like right. yeah. 
Scooby Doo was in, I guess, episode of Teen Titans Go. But they've also been like Batman, Brave and the Bold, and like yeah. other stuff like that before. So I mean, uh, DC did a huge Looney Tunes crossover. Oh man, I would that, love like, four it. years ago. A few years ago, I have a, a Lex Luthor and what's the pig? Porky Pig like, comic cover just <laughs> sure. cracked me up. They're both they're both in suits. And, you know, Porky's a little bald little pig, so it's hilarious um, um i would like to see some looney tunes what's the martian um, dude marvin the martian teams marvin up with martian. like Mar- or martian manhunter or something manhunter. That'd be cool. um yeah i mean it it was actually a pretty solid crossover yeah but yeah um zero idea what the scenes I, I, i'm in the same camp as people that like don't really like teen titans to go like i didn't really get into it you know when i grew up i did like watching the original teen titans um Titans Go is like not my cup of tea, like now that I'm older, but like kids clearly like it. And it's obviously successful. It's been running for like nine years or something, which is insane oh, to yeah. think about. And if it's um, if they're in like the common, uncommon rare slot and yeah. a kid could I mean, easily or like cheaply get a set of them, uh that's good for the game. I mean yeah. and cool yeah. with uh you know, this probably means chases are gonna be next trouble probably well i mean sadly maybe trouble alerts troublemakers more than likely yeah you know? if oh. they're going to continue the trend of like every well, dc like we still need the, the... we still need the rest of the legion of doom yeah i think we might have all the super friends but we still need the legion which yeah, i'm okay with sp- I, I want the whole legion in uh justice league unlimited it was split yeah. between legion of doom and there's like there's like 12 members of legion of doom there's like a ton a ton of them in that little swamp ship or wherever like ton, there's just tons oh i guess uh, but no, lantern w or yeah wonder woman 80th was the last dc set so yeah, that yeah. was secret six and lanterns lanterns uh, so uh, speaking yeah. of lanterns we got deck star here so hopefully this means we get some more lantern constructs in yeah. this set uh that'd be awesome yeah, pick hopefully up your guy gardener before them. uh he shoots up in price because if deck star here can make that chainsaw Saw. construct start probably gonna be a few points less maybe 40 30 points who knows hard to tell the old one was 65 and it's like oh that's uh, that's low points for a kitty but now guy is 50 points you know so it's like oh yeah yeah it's 25 like, point line five, yeah, blades, that. exploit pen poison yeah like that chainsaw baby that's what it's all Makes about a chainsaw yeah yeah <laughs> old kitty cat making a chainsaw i'm excited i I'll, I'm going to be really excited. I hope, obviously, I'm still going to hope that not too much of this set is like Teen Titans Go. I think probably like 12 figures. That's fine. You make yeah. the OG Teen Titans, and then you make like, well, he's like a villain in it, right? So you make like, who are the evil ones? It's like her, Jinx, Man, Mammoth. Um, they, They're like the bad Teen Titans, the, the B people. Gridlock? Uh, was it Gridlock? Cement Man. Um, big guy. It was. He was a big guy. I have no idea. Uh, then it's like the triplets or twins with like the weird eye hat things, right? You already know the look, like, way more Eyeclops. about the show than I. I'm pretty sure. Well, they. I mean, they were in the normal Titans show. I'm oh. just like, guessing. I don't remember what they were called though. Like, I don't really. Yeah. Oh, I man, their, a Slade what the group was called. I'd, I'd be yeah, okay with the Titans Slade go Slade, Slade, Slade or. One. I mean, uh, I will say people that liked the original um, Teen Titans. Didn't they do a crossover episode at one point? They brought like the other Teen Titans he into did. Teen Titans Go. He did yeah. Well, so I mean, that's a lot not, of like, the out of the question. Which actors are still the same as well too. Yeah, uh, I will say twelve would be a high number for a sub theme. So I'm assuming if this would is be high. this is like assuming several things. Assuming all these figures that we see, all six, are from the same set, um, we'd have one sub theme that is like the Scooby Gang most likely, which is uh, like maybe six, probably five. Uh, one sub-theme that's Teen Titans Go. I'm guessing eight, because we don't usually get sub-themes that have more than like eight, but it could be 12. <laughs> um, and then we've got Dexstar, which would hopefully mean other lanterns spread throughout, so like another six. And then we've got like comic booky looking Batman. Um, so oh, hopefully... Batman. Yeah. Quads for days. Quadzilla Batman over here. <laughs> I like the cape flowing though. Good, you know, good sculpt. He's yeah. still sort of standing say, there with a the batarang, but he got to get a little bit of cape flowing. The he ones nice. we see, the the least dynamic is Starfire and Scooby, and Scooby's yeah. just in like the iconic like comic cover pose. So yeah. I don't know what just else. There being a dog. I would like like a a prime version of Scooby that is uh, like 
rabies infested version where he's like just snarling oh, no. and you know he actually become like a superhero <laughs> dog come on that's mean uh just but dude. yeah the first thing i thought when i saw this was obviously tune clicks because oh, yeah. that like scooby has been uh 3d rendered by whiz kids once before he was a solid gold version uh and that oh that set never got <laughs> released yeah it's i don't know if you can even find information about tune clicks anymore yeah okay. because Obviously, it was like dead on arrival, and there was never an arrival. So, um, so sad. Let's see. Toon clicks. See if I can find anything. Toon clicks from WizKids. Um, back in 2006, WizKids announced Toon Clicks, a new collectible miniatures game targeted at the 6 to 12 demographic for the game, a trade show. Uh, let's see. Hoping Toon Clicks will both introduce kids to the fun of cmg's collectible miniature gaming and appeal to older demographic tune clicks will feature figures based on cartoon characters from the libraries of warner bros looney tunes the cartoon network Hanna barbera and kids wb with only 36 figures so yeah tune clicks was supposed to be a thing it would be interesting if because there's no set list if scooby is not part of a dc set and is part of a like warner bros Cartoon Network, Hanna Barbera, that kind of thing. That would be really interesting, really cool, because the possibilities there are kind of limitless. Um, but yeah, it does kind of open the door for more interesting IPs that we could get in HeroClix. And I, I mean, don't I'm all think that's ever a bad new thing. properties. Absolutely, yeah. it's always a good thing. Um, I feel like Scooby Gang. 40 points has got to be the highest any of them can be, though, right? Yeah. Like, they're going to be a fairly, like, an under 200-point team. Someone did say... Even if you really, like, play up what they can do. Uh, you know? There is a... I think it's a comic series, Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. Yeah, that's weird, though. Like, that's that, not normal. This yeah, is clearly normal. where they all get, like, laser guns, and, like, Daphne's Jeez. got, like, a Gatling gun. Scooby's all decked out. That's kind of cool. Um... But like cybernetic Scooby stuff, got? prosthetics and stuff. Oh, okay. he's, well, he's, yeah, he's like half robot or something. I don't it's know. He's got sad. like a Google Scoob. glasses. Um, I will say Shaggy is like ultra hipster with like the curled up mustache and long beard. Oh, man. He looks like uh, you? Yeah. Long beard, curled up I mustache? I mean, before I shaved, yeah, he does. Yeah. Oh, shoot, yeah. Keep getting, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if that's possible, I mean, who knows what they would be. Otherwise, yeah, I imagine... I, I mean, mission points where they try and get clues. I don't know. Ooh, okay, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, I, like I don't that. know. I don't know what the point cost could be. Because I mean, each yeah. do mission points. Oh, dude, Scooby doesn't and really. He's gonna have attack. He's gonna people. have elaborate death trap, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he's always setting traps. Yes, yes. Eggy we Scooby. finally get our Run away. Um, <laughs> I can't remember how long ago it was we talked about it, but uh, we finally get to play on our mouse trap map, where you get to oh, set yes. up the mouse trap and <laughs> yes. capture your opposing. Ca- Ooh, bring back the capture ability. Yeah, old man Jenkins. Yeah, we'll unmask the true villain of Hero Clicks. That's for sure. Yeah, it's behind that dolphin mask. But that was that was a single image from Gamma, and I and will that's say just one of them probably the most interesting to me yeah. um do you want to talk about the the figure that they gave people oh oh boy gee whiz uh hey remember that batman with the fun little starfish and the robin uniform that we saw a few years back oh, that yes. bad boy is maybe getting released who knows he was given away though to these people so that's pretty cool so yeah. got him in hand there's Product, a few so. that already sold on ebay for about 200 bucks so oh my gosh well wow 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 oh uh, yeah 75 point batman here he's running forward he's got a different costume very armored up little red bat symbol looks cool um man family gotham city justice league um I don't know what that is detective martial artist trinity that's what that was okay uh, he's got a trait dad did i do okay power generate a jaro bystander max one ability control but only if jaro isn't on the map a uh, really quick what's jaro do well jaro's got zero range he has the autonomous fist symbol and he has the tiny size symbol he has a four movement with special movement power he has 11 attack with precision strike 18 defense with toughness and one damage without wit and then he has the batman ally tune ability little dude's got stealth 
His special movement power is sidestep, mind control with a range value of 8. Pretty cool. So a little 11 attack, 1 damage, 18 defense, outwitter, uh, sidestep, mind control piece. You know, pretty solid, pretty solid. Uh, the power action sucks to make it, but let's get into what else Batman can do here for 75 points. Uh, he's got a special attack power that he has his entire dial. I always have a plan. If Batman occupies printed hindering terrain, he has free make a close attack. Pretty solid, you know, nice to have. And then he has a special damage power on his first two and his last two clicks of life, which is time to prepare for war. Outwit or free, choose one to last until your next turn. Outwit at no cost or choose an opposing character within range and line of fire. That character can't use protected outwit or protected out. Sorry, can't use protected outwit or protected outwit. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see if they are out of this guy, but essentially the way you should play that is safeguard outwit or protected outwit. Um, oh, that's funny. I love how you can choose between outwit or you can take a free action to then also choose outwit. outwit. Yeah. I don't, even even at the time this was made, did that, I don't, did that yeah. make sense? People are like, oh, well, because they changed at no cost. I'm like, yeah, but you still wouldn't have been able to outwit multiple times right so yeah. i don't yeah, understand yeah. I don't what at no cost would have been cuz free is at no i mean at no cost is now free so um yeah i don't know if there's like an effect that could have triggered it more than once not really i i don't know it is interesting we'll see if they errata yeah. that part of this card um then yeah you forgot odd. one of the most important parts about this batman he ignores oh. hindering terrain for movement purposes oh, yeah oh, how can i forget <laughs> i think uh yeah that also helps you know that he was was made before they had changes in mind uh, so text. what's his dial look like hey thank goodness he's got indomitable but yeah the flavor text is kind of mean uh charge robin he's getting away sidestep protect the totality this is where it really hurts his two defense powers Good one, son. But reflexes. That's why you're my favorite Robin ever. <laughs> the starfish you put in a little costume is your favorite Robin ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dang man, Dick Grayson, the OG, or even uh, the crowbar kid. He died for you, man. That's rough. I died the for crowbar you, crowbar kid. I forget his name. Todd. <laughs> yeah, the Jason. Jason Todd. Jason, Jason. That's, That's why they okay. call me the crowbar kid. I don't know. Wow, man. wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Mr. Uh, yeah, like this, this is your favorite Robin ever. I think Sunday, I assume Daro is like my controlling kid. him to like make shut up. I'm sorry, I didn't remember, <laughs> right? You call him crowbar. I mean, I don't care. Whatever, crowbar kids. I don't any anyways. Um he got charged his first two clicks, sidestep the rest of his six click long dial. Like I said, that special attack power in the entire dial. Toughness his first three clicks, combat reflexes his last three. A three damage on his first two clicks, two damage on his last four. A very bland, boring, uh, like dial wise. He's got yeah. four powers and then two special powers. And then, With the power yeah. action to. So, one cool thing two lightning bolts means he can target two people. That's always nice now for close. Cool. Um, with like the current dial design, obviously he was made in 2020 or probably made in like 2019 and then was slated to release in 2020, uh, 75 points for a, a top heavy dial because he drops from like three damage to two and then just can't punch through most reducers at that point. I, I think this guy would have been 50 points if he was actually released this year or designed this year. Yeah. Let's see, yeah. I think 50 points if it's free to make Daro, and then yeah. It's just an old dial. It's cool we're finally getting released. It is a cool sculpt. I do like that. I like the little starfish, I like the little flowing, like it's cute, it's neat. It's just it's just an old dial. Like it's just, you know, it is yeah. what it is. It's the way the world happened and everything, like old dial. It'd be like that. But yeah, it's cool. It's a cool idea. It's a unique version of Batman we don't normally have, so like that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We got a lot of sword news. 
Well, not a swan. I mean, there there was so, to be fair, there was like a bunch of Disney Plus news also, but like we, it was all just sculpts and stuff that we already yeah. knew. Like there was no release date. There wasn't anything. No. Um, we already like, super pretty useful. much know what the deal with Disney Plus is. Um, same with X of Swords. Um, we already did an episode on X of Swads. Uh, I think it's titled X of Swords. Guns. Um, it's guns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so. We see a panel that is uh, month one, a set of month one brick. So it's 10 boosters, set of month one, set of month two bricks, and a set of month three bricks. Now, when they've done this previously, when they've had multiple months, um, it was usually four, if I'm not mistaken. Because, like, War of Light uh, had two different sets of bricks that you could get. Wasn't it, like, six months? It might have Was been. it only four? I thought War of the Light was like a long it, time. It might have been, but yeah, there's... Uh, same with Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron had two different bricks that had different stuff that you would yeah. pull out of. Um, so you, like, from month to month, you weren't pulling from the same. Or, like, the first two months would be the same, then the last two months wouldn't be. Uh, them having three, I don't know. The box art is different. I don't know if there will be different stuff in each booster. And then again, as we've said before uh, in earlier episodes, this uh, storyline OP tournament will also coincide with a, a standard release of like the same bricks, but different characters. So you'll be able to purchase these bricks directly but then they'll have slightly different ones for the organized play. Uh, it does say 42 figures on like the front of the box because Goodness. these boosters have one of the character slots have a sword object instead of a character. So you'll pull four figures in a booster and one special object in every booster, um, which is seems like you'll be pulling a lot. But then we get an image with 20 swords. <sighs> And there are, uh, I mean, we've we've kind of looked at them before. There's like the Muramusa blade. There's a Magic's Soul Caliber blade. Um, there's this big Egyptian curved chopping block yeah. looking thing that's Ever, pretty yeah. sweet. Um, a flame sword, you know, some like shorter stuff. Just random, random assortment of swords, which is cool. Yeah, I, man, that, that little... Uh hair kid from the final fantasy game sword. <laughs> cool. cloud strife yeah 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 uh, that one um so there there has been some discussion at least in our uh discord about how how unique could each of these swords be and remember like the sculpts for the special objects in hammer of thor or no mighty thor the mighty thor um there were some reused sculpts that uh were like the generic version of weapons so you'd get generic sword that just gave you blades claws fangs for like four points or whatever it was and then you'd get like fandral sword that would give you blades claws fangs plus like a critical role increase or i don't i don't remember it doesn't really matter but i'm assuming that these will have some sort of unique factor, hopefully a varying point cost to make some of them better. There's obviously going to be like 10 that are almost unusable or no one really cares for. And then there's going to be maybe three that everyone's clamoring for. And then, I don't know, seven, I guess, is the leftover amount because there's 20 that uh, will be useful in certain situations. Um, it's a whole lot of equipping. That's for sure. And there's going to be a whole lot of people that come pre-equipped or you pay an additional like trait cost to come pre-equipped with one of these swords. So it's going to be a, a real wacky time when this set comes out. Uh, we'll see how, if the swords are the biggest deal or if the tarot cards, I guess, are the bigger deal. Um, because that's another thing that we saw is all bunch of tarot cards. And I think it said 78 in total. Uh, those will be have to be collected between the storyline OP kit, uh, the actual boosters, and then also there's going to be some in the starter set. So, yeah, sheer amount of of just stuff that we get in this is pretty wild. Um, and I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for any release, even though I'm not an X Men fan or any of them at all. What they're doing, I really but, want um, kids. Um, it'll be interesting man to go along with some weird. of the, the villains in this set I really want to get 
collect that uh, old Iron Maiden set because there's some like very Iron Maiden looking villains. Um, the Egyptian one, you mean? Yeah, like all the Egyptian ones for sure. Uh, Power Slave and uh, yeah. Trooper are like the two really cool ones. Um, there's cool. We do get some talk about these, actual these sculpts. sculpts. Yeah. So once again, we've got all the bases are just these bland flat colors. I think Wonder Woman yeah. was the one where we had actual textures, and I don't right. know if they're just doing away the grass, with that. Now. And sidewalks, or like a manhole cover. Yeah. Like eat. Yeah. Something. I think they're. I think they're doing away with that. They're just going super simple. Like yeah. that's what they did in War of the Realms. Which is, it's a, it's a little disappointing, but if it lets them make better sculpts, which I will say these sculpts do from from this one image do look quite a bit better. Uh, so in no particular order, we see Abigail Brand, of course. I don't know if she is currently, but used to lead Sword. Um, or we have Young Cable with his Cloud Strife looking sword. We have another pirate, Kate Pride, which is pretty cool. We have our first rare... Gal- or, Galactus, our first rare apocalypse in a long time because he's been a chaser super rare uh, since he started popping back up but we have danger room construct apocalypse so he is going to be one of the rare unique slash primes uh, prime slot we have a chase the white sword who looks like a power ranger villain or I don't know he just looks kind of like one of those power ranger Looking characters cool. yeah we have the same cable again. Did they have... They put him out twice. Okay, sure. Uh, we have we have Blink, Lockheed, Iska the Unbeatable, uh, another chase, Genesis. Uh, we have good old Peepers. Looks like Darwin. He's got like the purple and black color scheme. No idea who Peepers is, but I, I'm sure he plays a huge role. Uh, Scout, Orcus Soldier, Magic, She's got a sword. Cypher, who's also got a sword, but he's just like standing there with the sword on the ground. Mr. M, whoever that is. Bro, that's Mr. M. Take your freaking hat off. Shake his hand. That's Mr. (laughs) M, bro. (laughs) Uh, We've got Death, which is a really cool looking sculpt. Rogue, Captain Britain, which looks to be another super rare. Uh, This is, of course, the Abigail. Stick that... with the shield. Yeah, it looks cool. I like I like this sculpt more than the last one, actually. Not even though Abigail Brand. She's not like um or whatever. She's got like flowing hair, flowing cape. It looks neat. Who is this Captain Britain? Britain? I can't remember her name. Is it know, Abigail? Dude. Is it Psylocke? Is it not Psylocke with the weird shield? Is that not who it is? That's who Could I thought be. it was. She's got purple hair and like a purple construct I shield thing. For some reason I can't Just remember. It was Psylocke. Um We've got another magic. This one, I can't tell if it's the lighting, but looks like she's holding a different sword, even though it's the same sculpt. Then we have Taro. Ooh. We have Super Rare Deadpool Pool Party, where he's holding yeah, a dude. harpoon gun, a snorkel flipper. on his face, a big rubber ducky floaty around his waist, and flippers. Yeah, dude. Oh, he's got that fish symbol. You know he's ready. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. That is pretty fun. Uh, and then we've got Bell the Blood Moon, who is another villain-ish person. Um, yeah, these definitely look interesting. They look good. I will say it looks like a huge improvement, uh, just like the chases that we see yeah. and uh, some of the effects we see. It looks like a huge improvement since uh, War of the Realms. look very dynamic. Like I confidently say sculpts look dynamic. Look like they're fighting. Look like they're floating. Look like they're doing whatever. You know, we got Chris Angel over here popping off. Like they all look good. All these sculpts are cool. Even like the reuse. There's something about that big old apocalypse. There's chunky blue. Yeah, it's a rare, which is nice. It's really cool. Yeah. Like Finally, a- having a, an apocalypse that's not going to cost you like forty plus is cool, right? Um, yeah. Although I think that's the same magic, the danger room the version magic, might though. cost you that much. Is it the uh, same one? Which, they, like the sculpt is the same, but it's uh, common and uncommon. Oh, okay. That's the same. So it looks like the same sword to me. It it's very well magic. might be. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. Like even, the only thing that's a little bit of a bummer is like pirate getting another pirate kitty so soon. Getting another. Whatever and it is, it Captain looks Britain, to be Chick, Captain Britain. A uh, super rare again. Yeah. Yeah, like it's like, uh, man, we did just get these people. I'm cool with Lockheed. 45 points, though. What you doing for 45 points, Lockheed? What the heck? 
or you four down, whatever. But like, yeah, just like looking at everything, cool with it. Like the sculpts look cool. Like sure, there's some like remade characters already. I guess will have been. Eh, it's still just a year. Yeah. Well, they look good. The sculpts look good. I I can't say anything too negative because. Even with reused characters, there's a ton of new characters and good looking sculpts. Betsy Braddock. Um, not Betsy Braddock. That's, That's uh that thinking. is Psylocke. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. British Psylocke. It is. Or I, she yeah. Was, For some reason I yeah. was stuck on Abigail, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to, I had to figure it out. It was driving me nuts. I don't need sleep, I need answers. Yeah, so it looks to be, uh, I will also say, um, these monthly kits for a store to order, they're going to be like $200 per brick, <laughs> which will come with the the prize kit, which is why it's, or I'm assuming, comes with the prize kit. Uh, they will be more expensive, <sighs> but they're, of course, meant to be Maybe. in sealed format uh, or played in sealed format. I'm hoping that because there are exclusive figures in these boosters, I'm hoping that it's not going to cost an arm and a leg to collect this set. The tarot cards already are like team up cards level of hard to collect. There's going to be 70 some. Um, are those given away? Or are those thrown into boosters? Anyway? I think they come in thinking? boosters. They come in so boosters, the starter, and they might be, there's some that are prizing. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a hodgepodge. Some of them are like unique enough that they're only going to be in prizing. Yeah, just like I could see, I could see prizing. Maybe if they they learn their lesson from the last time with team of cards and stuff, they don't add any rarity to these things, and they oh. just sort of throw yeah. Every we'll talk about the new ones that we've seen because we've talked about oh, yeah. some of them previously. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's the nine the of swords, which has old Betsy Braddock with like a bunch of swords sticking out of her. Uh, I'll exactly. try and read it here. When a character that can use precision strike makes an attack, the attack can't be evaded and damage taken from the attack can't be reduced below two instead of one um so these tarot cards seem to be universal effects uh, whether they, they last the turn or whatever yeah. they seem to be a universal yeah. effect that affects your opponent and you so they might actually be detrimental to you as well as your opponent uh, there's the Five of Pentacles, which has X-23, and I'm not sure who's walking in front of her, but they're bald. I mean, I want to say, like, Wolverine, but that doesn't... The color scheme doesn't really make sense. Uh, when a character uses Charge, they modify Speed plus two for the Five of Pentacles. Um, Ace of Cups, and it's Apocalypse holding, like, a Holy Grail-looking thing. Oh, and again, the the artwork on these is really cool. Like, I don't know if I'll ever play with them, but I want a whole set just because the artwork's really neat. Um, Ace of Cups is when a character uses Super Senses, increase the result of the roll by plus one. That's always good. That means if you're running like a certain uh, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman team, TA, uh, like Spider-Man with the object, <laughs> the bracelets, uh and have this card on the field like he just can't be hit unless he rolls a one. Um, next up is the Four of Wands, which I'm assuming is some imagery of the Four Horsemen. And this is when a character that can use Exploit Weakness makes a close attack. After resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character adjacent to a hit target. So a lot of these are going to be kind of hard to pull off unless you build your team with these like explicit like power sets to benefit from them and then the last one is just the devil which looks like it's azazel i'm not really sure it's yeah, not probably. nightcrawler but it's yeah it's uh the red one could be cardinal i don't know if he's in this storyline uh and that is when a character attacks after resolutions deal them one penetrating damage for each something in the finalized attack roll Incredible. character attacks after resolutions, deal them one. Be five, might be a five. Might be five. Yeah, they're pretty big on fives. <clears throat> these X people, you know. That one's interesting because it, it like it doesn't help you. It it's like more of like a defensive one. If uh, an opposing character attacks you, they can take penetrating damage. But if you draw this card or put put this card in play and then make attacks, there's a chance that you're gonna hurt your own characters. 
Uh, but yeah, those are the new tarot cards that we saw. Um, does set it for July of 2022. So that'll be a summer organized play kit. Hey man, that's Gamma. A bunch of weird stuff coming out of Gamma. Nothing like in stone, concrete, besides like the X-Men stuff. Like all the DC stuff is up in the air pretty much. Still don't have a release date uh, for Disney Plus, but hey man, X Men stuff's looking looking fun. So that's gonna happen this summer. That's all I gotta say. But I don't really have much to say. I've got no dog in that in that camp. That yeah, fight. I just I'm always up for organized play. Obviously, I would have liked to have seen DC get some organized play. Um, yeah, like that. It'd be Bro, really cool to do another big. I would DC like to event. see anyone but X Men get organized play. X Men's yeah. been our organized play the last three times, right? Yeah. Re- uh, Future Genesis Path and then Regenesis and now yeah. this. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm sick and tired of these mutants, man. And I, <laughs> I've said it enough, so I'm not going to waste I mean, my time saying it here again. But at just least like... it will have been almost a full year since the last X Men heavy set. By the time this drops. Almost a full year, not quite a full year. I guess, uh, guess so. But, I mean, there were X-Men in uh, Empire, so... Were there X-Men in War of the Realms? I don't think so. Eh, I mean, whatever. Not a lot, Scarlet Witch, yeah, right? Like, not true. a ton. But, yeah. Not a big... Hopefully, not a big people's hype for X-Men will be back up at a peak so that we can get some organized play rolling in, like, a big way again. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty dang necessary. Add some life to the game. Fun. This is the sound of double news today, because apparently it's common enough to happen two weeks in a row. Breaking news. Uh, Once again, this week, we wrapped the podcast, and now, I mean, you guys can't tell, but we wrapped the podcast a few hours ago, and some news came out, so we got to reinsert Frankenstein, stitch this bad boy into the show. We have the 2022 Modern Age rotation announcement and a Silver Age update. Uh, two things I want to share with you today. Uh, let's do it up. Boy, so, Silver Age. Howdy. Yeah, it's it's a long, tough ride. Uh, let's yeah, let's just get let's just start. Put on our. I would say it's a roller big, coaster ride, but only if that roller, roller coaster roller. is Mr. Bones, no. and it's going to. Drive the carts into the dirt. Yeah. The sheer cliff that we're going um, over. The following changes are being made and are effective immediately. Silver Age ban list. All train dials. So this is all banned. Train dials. The Blackbird resource dial. Just the resource dial. The Penguin. ADW067 Hawkeye. Penguin. Yes, Fast Force Penguin. Yeah, not that people are uh, confused, but... Yeah, 019B Vulture. Jason Wingard. Uh, Avengers Age of Ultron Captain America ID card, Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. U.S. Agent ID card, and World's Finest Green Lantern ID card. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, Silver's, Silver's from Superior Foes and Forward Calder. Oh, oh, right. World's right. Finest you... was a year before Superior Foes, and that set's not legal for Silver, so elements from that set couldn't be legal, right? You know, you would think, but actually, check this out. There's a little clarification here. Uh, WizKid says, we would like to clarify that all ID cards, even those that were released prior to Marvel Hero Clicks, Superior Foes of Spider-Man, are allowed in the Silver Age format. All ID cards will remain on the watch list for the time being. So, even though it's Silver Age, right, like those are the legal sets. You can now pull things from 2015. But only, only if they're the ID cards. Yeah, I can play all elements the 2015 from ID cards 2015. you want. 15. <sighs> you know that game mechanic we introduced 7 years ago? Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Why? So you know all those problem characters you, we didn't think we were going to have, like Green Lantern or whatever. Well, they are going to be a problem. No, not Green Lantern, Green, Green Arrow. Arrow. Yeah, yeah. Because because the ID card is legal now. So all those Batmans and Oh my gosh, like... You know what's hilarious? The, uh, the level 7 ID card, the, the figure that's most known for being used with that ID card, that figure's not silver legal. Is not but the silver level legal. 7 ID card is legal. And again, so that's, that's anyone with the shield keyword. So legal for that ID card is probably like over 
250 some oh, characters because there's there's about 20 in a empire with the shield uh keyword fantastic four has some there's legacy cards with it leonardo de venom has it um <laughs> Doom 2099 has it. Like, I mean, oh, there's just a huge list of characters you can call in with that ID card. Uh, yeah. So, I'm not going to lie. Um, so really quickly, why why ban Captain America and Green Lantern? So, they have an ability. At first, I was like, oh, WizKids just hates me. They're specifically banning Captain America and U.S. Agent, two of my favorite characters. Uh, but I, I understand the Captain America and Green Lantern ban. The U.S. agent ban, I, I think, is ridiculous. I don't think it makes any sense. Uh, but Captain America says they give you ESD. This is their inspiration. So for all the people that are listening that might not even know what ID cards are, it's a power action to bring someone off your sideline. Uh, so number one, that burns the ID card. So you pay five points. Power action, bring someone off your sideline. They have a thing called an inspiration, which adjacent friendly characters can use uh, when they are adjacent to that ID character. If the ID character is ever not within five squares of the person it was called in, or something else happens. Uh, I forget what it is. Um, they die. They get hit. <laughs> I don't even know. Something else. If they're not within it's, five points, uh, or... Because oh, if yeah. they take a damage, they, they no, can die. I ID cards can die. character is killed. Oh, if the original character gets KO'd. Uh, yeah. Let me... Let me double check. So the wording is um, ID character can't be carried, given double power actions, replaced, or assigned resources. ID character returns to your sideline immediately at the beginning of your next turn if it's not within five squares of the chosen character or if it is removed from the map by another game effect. So, I mean, okay. if they're not within five would be... Like, if you pick up the character... I can't remember how that action that interaction works. If you pick up the character that called them in to move them, they're technically not like on the board. I can't remember if that's they stay in the square until you place them again. Uh, but yeah, so those are those are the three ways that they're immediately removed to the sideline. Um, now the wanted ID cards uh, that would be. Those were the ones that were um, convention exclusive. So the Days of Future Past, the summer organized play kit, if you want to call it that. Um, right. Those ones were slightly different. So uh, let's see. Five characters removed from another effect. ID characters can't be carried, equipped, given double power actions for place. Uh, ID characters can be KO'd. But these ones specifically said, let's see, ID character returns to your side. When, when those ones turn. took damage, they... Yeah, they went back to your sideline, right? So they, those ones can't be KO'd. One posters can't die. Um, Why does, but anyway, so yes, I'm just looking at the Wolverine, I, the wanted poster for Wolverine, and he has other identity listed as Colonel Logan. There is one version of one him that is called the Colonel Logan. Room. Hey, the just in case, that, that's, I want to make sure you can call in every Wolverine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's all that. Um. It hurts my brain. It hurts my brain a lot. Uh, so that's it. ID cards. I don't want to waste, honestly, that much time talking no. about them. They're all going to be legal. It sounds like it's going to be like a cesspool to even go to a Silver Age tournament if ID cards are all legal. Like, that really, yeah. really takes the wind out of my sails to go do Silver Age. I know um, getting yeah. figures to, like, their last click. Like, I remember, like, getting Unimine to the stop click and not being able to finish it off, and the next turn he just calls in a Wolverine and heals one off of that stop click, like doesn't even have to do an attack or anything. Just, um, I think we've already said uh, you can't perplex damage, so the days of like an ID battery are kind of gone, but Basically, looking at yeah, a all bit. these inspirations, it's a lot. And the fact that I'm allowed to play elements from sets that aren't legal for this format is very yeah. strange. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It's like I don't know if it's just like me. If you had the choice between make all ID cards illegal, let's say this is your conundrum. Oh, but some ID cards all look the same. So if they buy them from other people, they might think they're legal or something. Let's say like that's your made up conundrum that players might get confused what what ID cards are legal and which ones aren't. Here's an easy way to do it. Most of the community hates ID cards. So just ban them. 
Just don't. Yeah, Instead don't of make all of them legal, literally, you had two options. You could go down the path that was like daisies and rainbows and sunshine, and you chose like the path, like the yellow brick road. You could take the yellow brick road, and you took the path where it's like the old decrepit forest and like n rusty nails on the ground, where you're walking like gl glass with your bare feet. You made the most idiotic decision, and I I'm not trying to be overly mean. But like seriously, it's bad. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. I just yeah. I cannot wrap my head around the idea of a lot unless they're just like I, I want to watch the world burn. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will say, um, if they're sitting on a bunch of ID cards that they're trying to move, like especially convention exclusive ones, then it does make sense that they would make them legal for the time being because, I mean, there's no reason to like try and pass those out if there's no format that they support that they're allowed in. Uh, and we'll get some other stuff that they're passing out because there's no format that supports them now. Um, yeah. But banning the Blackbird resource dial. I, so, uh, again, I hate pre-banning anything. Now, we've already seen what Special Terrain does. I think they're just banning that. So that includes the WWE rings and – or it says yeah. Special Terrain dials, but I assume that also includes the Boxing rings. Boxing ring, and stuff. the WWE ring, uh, yeah. We've seen what Special Terrain does. I don't think it was ever that – problematic but it it does allow you to change maps so that's probably why the blackbird resource dial i guess at one point that did have like a little bit of a heyday um fast Wars did. penguin has a lot of interactions that i understand hawkeye and vulture are both changed with the new rules so not necessary to ban in my opinion there's not really a heavy um, reason to ban either of those if they, they can't change how running shot Gunshot and charge work with Empire, so they, they yeah. could do that. So, like, can they still would have been, do this thing? Baby, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Vulture would basically, if you like, let's say you're still equipping with the Auk arms, Vulture would be able yeah. to charge, um, charge, activate a close uh, or capital close, would, however you want to word it, to use like flurry and get two attacks and then be able to activate charge again if you KO'd something, but that second charge, he would only be able to do a close attack. Like, you can't keep doing it after that. You still only get the two. Okay. Uh, Hawkeye, wow. again, you'd be able to run in shot. You'd have to find... You wouldn't be able to flurry. The whole yeah, thing. Hawkeye, I don't yeah. even think, would be able to do the double tap because he's just wow. doing a range attack. Um, Jason, I guess I get because there's some bystanders that'll i mean he'll just always have options whenever bystanders are made I, uh that i don't Starro think there's any really that good of bystanders in no Silver. not to not that like people would build jason teams that would be right. so oppressive um not when like id cards are an option too yeah, uh, i honestly so then, think whiz kids is just tired of having to think about jason every yeah. time they make a, a bystander for you I'm like you know what don't make them legal for silver don't make them legal for modern anymore yeah not to worry about them. Go back to making whatever bystanders I we want. Do not like preemptively banning things, especially the ID cards. I'm like, if you're going to ban some ID cards, it should have been all or nothing. Uh, should have been, yeah, they, it should have been all or nothing. When they forced the rotation early for ID cards, I feel like that was a bad move, but I was glad to have them gone. I thought that was a bad move because they had just released some not long ago as a convention like like part of the convention exclusive uh the blackbird was a purchasable so anyone that went out and bought one or bought one online was kind of sol when they rotated them early and that was bad i did not like that but i did like not having to worry about them um that being said i have no idea who in their right mind would think we're gonna make a format it's gonna be this time period so from superior foes essentially like late 2016 mid to late 2016 forward and then they're reaching years previously back to yeah. avengers assemble as a is legal age of ultron is legal nick fury uh, id cards are legal but not those sets just elements from those sets which also makes me mad because uh like do you think that the Pym Particles from Avengers Assemble is legal? No. There's no, no way. No. Uh, do you think that like the um, resources that like allowed you to 
Like the Quinjet isn't legal. The round table isn't legal. Uh, none of the stuff from Age of Ultron <laughs> is. Yeah. I can't even That's, use uh, Henry from the Fast Forces oh. <laughs> of Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, let's just run through the rest of this really quickly. It just hurts. I, I hate the ID cards thing. It really hurts. So they're making some erratas. Uh, okay, sorry. Some more ID card clarification really quickly. All, the, all ID cards legal, blah, 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 blah. New general rule. You cannot have an ID card on your force if it shares the name with another ID card already on your force. For example, there's the XXS Wolverine ID card. You could not play the Wolverine Wanted poster ID card as well as that one. Same with the, they share the same name. student Cyclops and Headmaster right. Cyclops IDs. Just Cyclops. Uh, so um, that is a good change. I still don't think ID batteries are going to be played the way they used to be, but, I mean, that is something that we would see often. I don't think any team in 2018 didn't have two Cyclopses on it, like on sideline. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a ton. Uh Errata for ID cards in general here. So they used to be an at the beginning of the game thing. Now they are, when you reveal your forces, choose a character on your sideline whose name matches the name on this ID card. It used to be name or real name. Then you turn it to a starting line. So you can choose any starting line at the beginning of any, whenever. Whenever you reveal your forces, you could say, oh, I want this dude to be on 50. Oh, I see these people. I'll have them at 100 instead. Uh, But you can't do that like halfway through the game or anything. It just has to be when you reveal your forces. Um, That character is called an ID character. You can't have more ID characters on your sideline than characters on your starting force. Oddly enough, that used to be a problem. Now I think with how many people we put on forces, it's no longer a problem at all, really. Yeah. Which is ironic. Yeah, it used to be slip some like generic thugs into your team just to be able to call in more ID cards. Hilarious. Um, um, Surter got yeah. ratted. So yeah, you want to go through all these? Yeah, uh, big boys. Pretty easy, but the yeah, it. the main thing is they did the same fix that uh, the same fix that Tri Sentinel and Colossal Iceman both had to get. <laughs> so Surter is now free if no other Colossal Retaliation power has been activated this turn. Choose an opposing character that attacked Surter or damaged a friendly character since your last turn. Place Surter such that he can make a close combat attack targeting the chosen character, then do so. Now, here's the part that matters. If he did, after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character within two squares. So you can no longer just activate that uh, with the free, and after resolutions, they have that if he did text in there now. Uh, Carnage has... Uh, place Carnage such that you can make a close stack target in a chosen character, then do so. After resolutions, you may generate a symbiote bystander adjacent to the chosen character. That was the before. <laughs> now it is, if he did, after resolutions, you may generate a symbiote bystander adjacent to the opposing character. Uh, Mangog, similarly, um, place him so that you can target all opposing characters within three squares in line of fire, then do so. Hit characters are each dealt four damage instead of norm- normal damage. If he did, after resolutions, make close attack targeting each opposing character within two squares in line of fire, and they're dealt three damage instead of normal damage. Uh, They all implement the if he did language that was placed on Colossal Retaliators and Modern Age Erratus previously. This requires an attack to have been made in order for the after resolutions effect to trigger. I mean, at least they fixed those, because that would have been a problem if they had just... And they fixed them without banning them, so I'm I'm glad, I guess. Um, they're still good. I don't think anyone ever played them like this, really. At least, like, not uh, when they first released. This wasn't something that people realized until right before they rotated. Yeah, uh, right near the end of their lifespan. Uh, figures that are remaining on the watch list but have no change currently is 060 The Joker. I believe that's the HaHa Joker. Is that let's see, 060? That is, yeah, haha ha Joker, the unique. He's already been errated once, but he's on the watch list. The Fast Force Harley Quinn uh, corrupt GCPD cop. This is the one that just never dies. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. The Earth X Daredevil also never dies. That might be a trend going forward. The AI uh, main set giant girl. The AI main set Groot. There is no alternative for that, though. The Fast Force AI giant girl. Um, WizKids con exclusive Lockjaw with the Infinity Collar. The X Men animated series Proteus Zero. 
uh, 14 is that the rare? I think that's the rare. Uh, certainly might be. The rare yeah. Proteus, uh, and then Wendigo also <laughs> on the good. watch list. Uh, 030 Moira X from House of X, and all ID cards remain on the watch list. I don't know. I want to huh. look at Moira X real quick and see if there's yeah. a specific interaction that might. Moira X. So she's already unique. She is the isn't a standard character, can't be equipped or pilot. She takes maximum of one damage from attacks, can't be healed, can't be chosen for Mastermind or Krakoan Revival, protected Pulse Wave. She can use the standard powers printed on her card. I can't really think of an interaction off the top of my head that would make her breakable. Maybe if she was able to be chosen for Mastermind, but she's not. Um, I mean, she gets to, like, stack powers, but yeah. that's not really overly impressive but that's that's the stuff that's on the watch list no update yet so they haven't changed those removed from the watch list so these are these are figures that were on the watch list and they've deemed them a-okay uh joker's wild jakeem thunder honestly i agree with that one he's kind of overcosted by today's standards uh the mighty thor unimind probably gonna see play in silver um even though Perplex doesn't work on damage anymore, I still think that he's just really hard to deal with in most situations. Uh, Mini yeah. Shredder was removed. The Gauntlet Black Panther from Secret Wars Black or Secret Wars Battle World. Um, the Danger Room Magneto, Sabretooth, and Mister Sinister. Which I assume this was just them making sure like don't die tech wasn't too powerful. Yeah, I guess they were just looking at all the constructs. Yeah, something. Uh, yeah. The Colossal Dark Phoenix from X-Men Animated Series. The Colossal Giganto Namor Rare from uh, Avengers Infinity. And the Tri-Sentinel, Wizkid exclusive Tri-Sentinel. Which, yeah, I'm fine with all of those not being changed. I don't think any of them are too oppressive in silver. Um, at least not on like the offset. Obviously, Giganto Namor did win a, help win a Worlds, but that was a much different situation than what we're in now a different time, a different time. Who's a yeah. different time? Uh, mini shredder was also on that team but i think just a little too overcosted for what it does now unimind ah yeah. uh, i that's i'm up in the air about unimind the no perplexing think... damage really hurts him but yeah i, I do not Ugh. think that unimind will be a huge problem in silver maybe in like silver 400 formats but in 300 silver i don't think he does enough um and that's, I don't know. I haven't played against one in a while, but last time I did, it, it was killed in one turn. So, or not really killed because it pops out Eternals. So yeah. Right, those idiots. Now we get to the real fun part. What's going to rotate? Awesome. Yeah. This will be leaving Modern Age. DC Comics, so these are five-figure booster sets. The DC Comics Rebirth set, Avengers, Black Panther, and the Illuminati, X-Men, the animated series, the Dark Phoenix Saga, Captain America and the Avengers, Justice League Unlimited. Oh man, we're only gonna have one DC yeah, set in modern a for a bit. DC that's set. Wonder Woman. That's a rough. Is gonna be the. Only I thought they would DC maybe set. pull what they did last time, where they yeah. at least leave two DC I, sets I in modern. But no. Yeah. Part of me is a little sad Rebirth to see uh, Cake Lex go, but you know, goodbye to you know Black Vulcan and gang. Yeah, I'm okay yeah, with seeing those guys true. get out of here. I mean, except they'll they'll always be in silver now. They'll always be in uh, silver. That's fast true. forces that are rotating are also Rebirth, Avengers, Black Panther, Illuminati, uh, Star Trek, HeroClix, Away Team, Resistance is futile. I don't know if they even did a fast. I guess yeah, they did. They only did the one fast force. Uh, X Men animated series, Dark Phoenix Saga, and Captain America and the Avengers Fast Force starters. WWE Rock and Sock Connection is rotating. The Mixed Match Challenge is rotating. The Orville Starter is rotating. Uh, the Justice League Unlimited Starter is rotating. And the Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash, which, gosh, that feels like it just came out. Does it not? I feel like yeah. Cosmic Clash deserved to survive just a little bit longer. But I guess it did sad. come out like way... Well, it was two months earlier than the actual set. Man, That's true. Seems like just yesterday I unboxed Cosmic Clash. Cosmic Clash, I just, I'm going to miss the maps. I didn't really play the figures a whole lot, but the maps were fun. That's true. I did play the maps a lot. 
Oh, uh, this the micro one. sets. Yeah. Oh, dude. Wolverine, Cyclops, X Men Regenesis is gone. Away team, Resistance is futile. Away team to boldly go. WWE Hero Clicks, Deep Cuts, X Men Primed, and Black Widow movie are all rotating. Yeah. I should have known. I mean, WWE was released. The first wave was released in 2019. Um, and then a whole year later, we did Extreme Rules. And that's yep. been almost two years since we filmed Extreme <sighs> Rules after waiting another year for Wave 2. Uh, nope. Not great. Not great news. Um, this means no indie stuff is in Hero Clicks anymore. Uh, yeah. Which just kind of, eh, I don't know. It it's, just takes a little sad. bit of air out of the tires. Um, there's one DC set, and then everything else in modern is Marvel. Yeah, yeah because it's, it's really cuts down on all the diversity. Yeah. And you're probably thinking, like, wait, wait, wait. There were some convention exclusives that were released, right? Those don't get rotated as soon. Those weren't released until, well, heck. Last year. Less than a year ago, yeah. Only like mere months ago, Ultimate Warrior. Summer. And heck, Summer. that I'm John released. Cena, he hasn't even it's been released yet, out. so surely he'll be in modern, right? Guess what, Simeon? On the on the rotation list, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, but the important thing is that 002 Ultimate Warrior and 003 John Cena are being rotated in July. Yeah. The John only, Cena, the only who's 20, never... 20 convention exclusives on that list, by the way. Yep. Um, yeah, yep. specifically early rotating out WWE. Oh, that's yep. rough. Um, yeah, so all of the to go along with that, all of the Mandarin rings, all of the 2019 convention exclusives, uh, winnables, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so Mandarin rings are a big one. Um, Exo specs, I guess, if you were still playing that all that kind of stuff. And then I don't think anyone was really playing with these LEs. I mean, if you were, you were playing them casually. And so it won't matter too much, but yeah, yeah all of the 2019 LE um, and the first five months of 2020 LEs, which were uh, Martian Manhunter, Batman, Despero, Black Canary, Green Arrow, Wildcat, Mara, Atlantean General, King Trench, Catwoman, Batman, Poison Ivy, um yeah then there's the older ones i won't list because there's a lot but i don't think anyone was really seriously playing those and if you were playing them then it probably wasn't in a competitive setting so you can still keep playing them but yes that is the news that dropped after we were done recording again thank you whoever whoever determined friday was the day that we do news drop more news yeah, yeah. yikes yep well, it's to me, you know, as sad as it is, this feels like the nail in the coffin for WWE Wave 2. Yeah. If it this doesn't really spell sucks. disaster for you at Survivor Series, then uh, <laughs> yeah. your, your Steiner math is wrong. Uh, I mean, no, I, the early rotation, the lack of news, um, yeah. I'm pretty sure WWE Wave 2 at this point is completely dead. Uh, I don't know if WizKids will ever come out and say it. I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, There's still websites out there that will allow you to pre-order it, so maybe under the table or something, WizKids should reach out to those websites and have them issue refunds and take those listings down or something i don't uh, you really should be know. able to at the very least with cool stuff inc you can cancel a pre-order uh anytime so if you pre-ordered yeah, yeah. it you'll be able to get your money back with cool stuff which is no, nice I, yeah anyone you should be able to get it back from any site that you've pre-ordered but i just think yeah. like for to protect people from future pre-orders like if somebody started playing the game and like saw oh, that sure or, yeah they don't know yeah. yeah have them take oh you mean take down like the listing for it yeah Right, yeah. That'd be, that'd be smart. Sure would See be. See if they do it. Yeah. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's, I don't want to sound too bummed out because I, I still am excited for, you know, monthly play with X-Men. I'm still excited for Scooby-Doo, and I'm still excited for Disney+. Plus. But this really, it just really sucks. It, it really yucks my yum. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big wrestling fan. You are. Tons of people are. 
I'm a big fan of just different properties that aren't Marvel and DC. I love Marvel. I like DC. Man, it'd be cool to have some other stuff. Yeah. But Ultimate Warrior. I mean, I was so excited for Warrior, man. I like and this, the make this face is paint off of and everything. Like, uh, having having the news about uh potential like Cartoon Network, Hanna Barbera, like right. whatever, whatever that kind of potentially some of that leaking into HeroClix. Uh, some indie property kind of stuff. I mean, at the very least, we know Scooby Doo is probably gonna make it. But man, I can't what even a play. Big yikes! On Cena with my Scooby Doo team. That's I'm so. Just, that's such a bummer. Uh, I'm gonna have to have. I'm gonna pay the seventy dollars to get a Kurt Angle promo or cameo, asking WizKids to please release his figure. That's what, like, uh, I wonder what stage of production they were in. Like, did they actually make them, and there's cards and figures out there somewhere, just, I, like, waiting to be shoveled into a giant dumpster? In a pit somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Man, what if? Dude, well, here's the thing, right? So, John Cena is 003, Ultimate Warrior is 002, which means that I have to assume that 001 was Sting. Like, there's, yeah. there's no other one I could assume. And so, like, and I, as soon as he was said to be in AEW, like, I made, I made that video. I knew that was it for Sting. I, I really did. I'm like, yeah, it's, he's probably, and this not getting released. And I will say mean, this: it's probably not WizKids' fault. It's probably no. all WWE's fault. I, I will say, percent would believe that. I think WizKids could find a way if they really wanted to to give some news, uh, no matter what kind of contract you're in. Like, I think that they're. Like, even if it's, like, a non-disclosure or whatever, being able to say, we will no longer hold, like, carry this product should be something that you're allowed to say. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I feel like, I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure that you're allowed to be like, yeah, this product that I was going to sell, not going to sell it. Not saying why, just not going to sell it. Like, I'm pretty sure yeah. that's a thing that a company would be allowed to do, even in a non-disclosure agreement. Um, but... That being said, yeah, it's definitely not on WizKids' end because they clearly made these figures. They put time and money into designing right. them, at least to the extent where there's, you know, convention exclusives. Because I bet with them having the 2020 year on them, I imagine they were designed all at the same time. So, yeah, I would pro- so. probably Wave 2 out there in the ether somewhere uh, just won't ever come to us. But also to go along with all this, this means that all of the ROC prizing will be silver. Um, none of the like the none of the prizing that the ROC is going to be able to give out will be modern or available for WizKid modern tournaments. Like you won't be able to play it in those. You'll be able to play them in the ROC tournaments. The but, ROC Silver Age, yeah, yeah, which is just weird. It's almost like back to when the ROC did its own thing and WizKids did its own thing, and like so the maps that they made and yada yada was always legal at their tournaments and not at WizKid official events it's pretty much the same thing unless WizKids hosts a silver event at like worlds or something which i imagine the roc would be running that anyhow i don't really know oh well oh well i that's all that's all i have to say on it i it's just it's sad news it's a real big bummer you know it makes me you know not really excited to play silver age all like completely honest yeah yeah not until uh somebody does something about id cards i don't think it's not that i think that id cards are broken i just do not want to play with them again and man i also don't really want to dig them up too much but at the very least maybe after a couple uh silver age tournaments roll out and id cards are popular or not popular, I'll be able to move the ones that I never sold in time. Especially yeah, the true. world's finest in uh, Avengers Assemble. Who would have thought those would have ever been played? I know. Yet? Now i got to look at like the stack of ones that I still have that I just kind of kept because I had characters I liked. One, it's a, it's a good thing I kept like Hawkeye and stuff, I suppose. Those ones were Dude, so no, boring not. compared to like the ones they released uh, for like X-Men. Looking back at the Avengers Assemble ones... Uh, let's look at the inspiration. They're fine. Black Widow like, okay. is oh, the inspiration. Plus yeah. one attack value. Hawkeye is plus very, two range value. Simple. Falcon is plus two speed value. Hercules is modified damage plus one. Justice Ooh. is modified range value by plus two. 
Mockingbird is defense by plus one. Nova is speed by plus two. Ronin attack plus one. Defense plus one. Damage plus one. Uh, plus one attack when making close attacks. Uh, modified defense plus two against ranged attacks. Yeah, it's just a lot of that. What's uh. funny is I can put I can pay to put a manifold ID on my team, and there won't be a Silver Age legal manifold. <laughs> same with Rick Jones. Same with Triathlon. Oh, right. Probably same yeah. with oh, Jarvis, man. Hellcat. At least there will be a Cersei, Sandman. There's not going to be a Ronin. Oh, and it's no uh, longer yeah, uh, if you can't use real, real names, names and stuff, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I'd be like, "What do you mean, no you call him Blade?" Nope. Quite literally, no justice. No justice. It's <laughs> a good note to end it on. I've got nothing else to say. Yep. So back to the show that we recorded previous to this, and I'm sure that the transition will be seamless. Doo-doo-doo. Right. We have quite a few listener questions to get through, so let's do those now. There are dozens of us off really quick not really a listener question here but just like listener stuff i'm gonna read an email uh, old joel sends us this he said hey guys start by saying roll 20 is terrible so i don't use it fair enough he says i have little kids so i don't have time to sit for an hour on my computer and play on the what's it thing that you guys use a tabletop simulator um and so he says uh so i need to find a system where i could play someone mostly just my brother just make a move at like most once a day or sometimes longer between depending on how in the way regular life is. Since, as I said, I have little kids, I can't leave an actual map out with actual clicks out or my children will eat them or flick them or make them fly or who knows what. Uh, yikes. Anyway, a while back, I found a site that had maps and you could number your characters. And so you're just moving around numbered circles around a board and it saves the state for you in a unique url and he's like yeah i didn't like didn't feel like hero clicks so i built this in a google slides document instead and my brother and i have been playing mixed sealed type games for the last few months and each game takes us about two weeks to play this one was the civil war op kit and the justice league new 52 um it's pretty interesting so he's sort of got like map got like figure pngs that look better than like the roll 20 figures which i don't know why people don't use or stuff like this either um like it looks better than the weird roll 20 tokens it's uh just like actual images of like the hero clicks figure itself which is nice and it's on like the map and the map isn't just like the white or nothing and then green and then whatever brown it's like the actual right. color map which is nice um and yeah it looks like it looks really good uh, and then he says, since it lives in a Google Slides, both people can move their own pieces. Uh, the only thing is, like, it has no dice rolls, so the dice rolls are on the honor system. He said, let's be honest, if you got to lie about dice rolls and, uh, like, a casual Heroclix game, maybe you need the win. Uh, so go for it. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to share. I thought you guys might find it interesting. Yeah, I do think it's interesting, man. Like, it's really yeah. cool that, you know, like, this world, first of all, it's not by text or whatever which is just like already bonus points for you for figuring out like a way to save the game state you know have it feel like hero clicks look more like hero clicks i really like these uh, it's pretty sweet i'll have to do yeah. you a picture simian and then i will say maybe put these on facebook or twitter as a cat owner uh, i understand not being able to leave hero clicks out because this creature has been destroying everything i hold dear i have a a D and D miniature in front of me that she chewed both arms off of. Oh no! I'm just like, why? What are you? Why? Why do you like this? You have all these toys. You have no reason to do this. So now I have to set out decoy hero clicks so that she attacks those. And I'm what? like, yes, you fool. Oh, those are only commons. <laughs> but yeah. Oh goodness gracious! <laughs> all right. No, it does sound uh, cool. Yeah. Um, finding ways to play when your normal way of playing isn't available is always hard. It's always hard to like adapt, but it's cool that you found a way that actually fits around your schedule and stuff and it still sounds pretty fun. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, All right, Simeon, do you want to, before we get into the rest of the questions, go through uh, the second week of our Malcolm, choose our favorite figure from each set questions. Yeah. Uh, so we are going from, this is from the Avengers set, first carded set, to the last carded set that has normal dials, or not normal, but before Oreo. So it'll end at Captain America. It's Avengers to Captain America. We're just going to rattle through them. 
Uh, yeah. We, Once we again, have way less figures, but still just going to rattle through them. Malcolm asked uh, if we had to pick one figure from every set, which would that figure be? So that's what these are, essentially. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and get started. Yep. So with Avengers, I chose Captain America and Bucky. Yeah, I, I kind of thought you did. I, I do own that one. Um, now yeah. I do. I went with the 054 Ares, who has that 13 Ooh. for 5. Uh, this is, of course, Marvel Ares, not the, well, technically God of War, but not as not the other. God of War as yeah. the Wonder Woman one. In Justice League, I chose Doomsday. Great sculpt, great dial. Had to pick him. Yeah, I went with Lobo for similar reasons. This is him on his big old space bike. Mutations of Monsters, I chose 056. Uh, Wolverine, uh, Zombie Galactus yeah, Wolverine. Yeah, I chose the same one. Nice, <laughs> yep. nice. I feel like we might have the same one for Crisis as well. Oh. I chose 035, Uncle Sam. Oh, I do own that one. I chose 057, The Flash. This is oh, the okay. um, running out of time one where he's like slowly, slowly dying. dying on the sculpt. Good one. That's good. Uh, but his, yeah, his speed goes from 9 on click 1 to 16 on click 8, which is just, it's real nuts. In Secret Invasion, I had to choose my man, uh, 019, Isaiah Bradley, Captain America. This one's for you, Ian. Pick. I went with <laughs> uh, Super Scroll Illuminati, 061. Oh, no, no. Yeah. In Arkham Asylum, I went with 048. Bizarro number one. Hilarious sculpt. He's like falling upwards. Oh, yeah. Uh, like flying really funny sculpt, upside down. Yeah. I went with 050 Metron. Chair guy. Hammer of Thor. I chose, no surprise to anyone, 040 Captain America. Yeah. Is that the shield bounce one? That is, yeah, that's the shield uh, deflection trajectory. Yep. I almost went with that one. Uh, I went with... 049 Ultron, really cool sculpt. Yeah. I've talked about this piece before, but really cool sculpt. 12 speed charge, 12 attack pulse wave, 4 damage. Um, I hope they make a legacy card for this one. If Brave and the Bold, I picked 040 Lex Luthor and Brainiac. Ooh. I went with one of my best cosplays from Thursday Throwdown, oh. Shazam and Black Adam. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> uh Web of Spider-Man, I chose 044 Rocket Racer. Heck yeah. Nice. I went with 063 Bombastic Bagman. This is another one I really hope that we get a legacy card for, and I hope this, the trait stays the same. He's the one that when he takes damage from an attack, you deal the attacker pen damage equal to the damage taken. It's pretty sweet. pretty gnarly. Yeah. Uh, DC 75th Anniversary, I chose Guy Gardner, Red Lantern Guy. Uh, let's see. I went with, I think this is from the anniversary set, uh, 058 Ares. I just really like my Ares. Uh, giant size X-Men. I went with Aaron Stack, Machine Man here. Oh, Next yeah. Wave it's a good Man. sculpt. I saw uh, hand action going on. From giant size X-Men, I went with the Horseman of Death Wolverine. Mm. Calder mentioned this one, I think, last cool. week on the episode. The one with yeah. the sword. 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 Mutants with swords. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, next up in the Captain America set. This was tough for me. I own this whole set. I love this set. It's a great um, set. I went with the Captain. Uh, okay. It's really, really good, comic accurate. It's the exact pose the first time he picks up Thor's hammer. It's a you know fun dial. I, I like the cap, but I mean, like, so super close ones to, like, Mr. Immortal, Batrock, uh, Herc Hanger, Baron, Sh Baron Strucker has an incredible sculpt in this. Yeah. Like, such a good set. Great sculpt uh, on Falcon. Uh, yeah, Falcon, yeah, Mr. That Immortal. Captain America with the oh, shield mount. Uh, Squirrel Girl, of course, like, yeah, with the Monkey Girl's Joe. Modoc is cool. Maelstrom's great skull. Like it's so many, so many cool, so much good stuff in the set. Yeah. How uh, could you forget about Rojas as as well? So yeah, Ro Native Rojas? American Captain America. Yeah. Rojas. Uh, Rojas. That's a good one. Goofy sculpt, but he's like mid uh, goofy. dinner dinner plate throw is what he's doing. If you read the comic, he's gonna throw that dinner plate. Akin to throwing a shield. Um such a bad dial. Man, I wish it was better. Um <laughs> just need more sixteen oh two figures. 
Uh, my pick from the Captain America set was Weapon X, the old yeah. breaking out of the tank yeah. Weapon X. Just a, it's a really cool sculpt, and it's also a gimmick that we don't get very often. I liked Countdown Clicks. Yeah, it literally, it was like two sets, right? We got them in this set, and then we got them in oh, the Dark World. I think that's all I can think of. Ah, uh, yeah, I might have gotten them more, but the the gimmick has been. I mean, I guess like uh, Before, Exodia's like, kind of like right, that, like but tokens that should get removed or whatever. Right. There's a few things. Wasn't there a uh, what was that Spider-Man? Was it Secret Wars Battle World where there was like a Spider-Man? Oh, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got that. The normal Spidey has the to remove the tokens and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Starts the game with Stasis tokens. Stasis Spidey. That's what it was. Um, yeah. It it doesn't happen very often, and it doesn't happen in like the countdown click way where you actually turn the dial. Now it's like you put tokens on the card, but it is cool. Right. Next up, we have all of our Discord questions. Uh, if you want to ask us questions on the Discord or send us questions at all, if you join Patreon, you will then get a link to our Discord. That's where we have our awesome Discord community where we play Bad Sam once a week. We have, you know, giveaways on Patreon where you can get our really cool action tokens, bystander tokens, and everything. Really, really appreciate uh, Josh over on Facebook has been posting about them a lot. We super appreciate that, number one, that he's excited to use these bystanders, him and his son, playing them. And so we are just, we're just really glad that he got to enjoy all that cool stuff. So if you want cool bystanders like that, you can join our Patreon and all that other stuff. Support the content we make. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, Luke. As with the disappointment of Recruiter now behind us, I find myself looking back at recently introduced traits that had better executions. Let's talk about those. Let's talk about Krakoan Revival. I can't say I love Krakoan Revival as much as you do, but okay. Uh, what keyword needs its own version of Krakoan Revival? What would you name it? Uh, who would you give the trait to? And who would the pogs generated by your opponent be? This is a pretty tough one. Um, yeah. We once played at our local venue that every, like, whatever your named keyword was had Krakoan Revival, but you just made the same Krakoan Pogs, you know? You just, like, you chose the highest point person, whatever. I'm going to go with Spider-Man Family. Okay. And trade is going to be, there's, can't get rid of the Green Menace or something like that. Clone Saga. And, and <laughs> yes, uh, Spider Clones. Every time you kill a Spider-Man, a little Spider-Man clone pops out it generates a little spider-man clone uh i think it's funny um obviously this is a direct reference to one of the greatest movies of all time uh turkish spider-man and all those <laughs> spider clones that were present in that film uh but yeah i could also see my my secondary pick is undertaker um giving him it but like it's weird to give it to like everybody in wwe or whatever i think undertaker control or something i don't know and then like you know like there's always like hooded people that follow him around yeah Maybe those could be the bystanders you know Can't crypt keeper dudes them, but... you know they would like bring out the coffin and stuff and yeah like the uh, yeah, dru like... druids dru or druids yeah they called them something um yeah my my choice would be like lanterns and uh, instead of calling it Krakoan Revival, it'd be something like Parallax Rebirth or something like that. Uh, like Kind of like when Hal Jordan brings a bunch of people back to life. Or or you could do Black Lantern, just like reanimating, reanimating stuff. Um, and then as far as the pogs generated, we already have like the Lantern Construct pog kind of people. Um, not the, like the Construct whatever, but like the... Uh, We've got like the the three dogs that Carousel makes, um, and we've got the orange lantern construct pogs. There's a bunch of pogs that came out around War of Light, but yeah, something like that. I think it's kind of comic accurate, not in the same way Cohen Revival is, but kind of. Uh, next up, we have Bill. He says, "How do you feel about WizKids changing token designs and making them circular? I think it's weird, especially for Barrier." So. This is something we missed, I guess, or at least we didn't talk about uh, that I missed, at least, uh, during our Disney Plus little rant rave session, is all the tokens in the starter set, the play whatever set, around. 
Well, clouds around, specials around. So instead of like being a square and filling out the whole, you know, square on the map, like round tokens, like our action tokens and stuff around. Yeah. Uh, very weird. I, I I feel like stuff like that, when it takes up the entirety of a square, it probably should just be square. Yeah. Very I'll odd. say I'm not a fan because the like map it. is like grid based. Um so like I might I might go to attack somebody and just not see that they're on top of smoke cloud because the circle base covers the circle smoke or something along those lines. So I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm also not a huge fan of like the giant text that is in like the middle of it. Like debris just has like a big black hole that says debris in the middle. It doesn't really look like yeah. debris to me. Um, I'm not a fan of like the white and green checkered to denote hindering. Uh, I but don't like yeah, that. I I don't know. Not a huge fan. Like you said, like the the maps have square grids, so it would make sense if the terrain markers were square grids. Uh, Bill also goes on to ask: Video games have achievements and trophies. How? What would you make them in Hero Clicks? Uh, so let's ignore the tr- trophy slash ach- achievement system that the win already has. Um, You're I would say all the is... ID card codes that I entered were for nothing. We're just gonna ignore them. They were for nothing the moment you entered them. Yeah. Like, if you're flexing your win achievements, I don't know, man. You need to get a life or something. That's kind of sad. <laughs> One of my old venues, uh, before I moved, they would, um, on holidays. There's like achievements for playing on holidays on the win system. So they would set up a, uh, whatever an event for like July Fourth. And no one would actually show up, but they'd all, like, participate. And the judge would, like, fill stuff out just so they could get the achievements. And they asked me one time, they're like, do you want us to, like, sign you up for it, too? And I was like, we're we're not actually going to play? And they're like, no, we just just collect the achievements. I was like, no. I don't care about win achievements. That's... I I get it when people are like, man, I'm an achievement hunter. I got to have them all. Like, there are just some people like that. It's like, oh... I gotta get these achievements and i'm not gonna lie like the first time i ever like looked at like the win achievements i was like man it'd be cool to try to get all these but like i'm not gonna like that yeah like, i don't know uh so you, you would have got your saint patrick's day one yesterday. yeah though. achievements <laughs> slash trophies that we would make in hero clicks um there was a list of uh like things that you've done as a hero clicks player like how many points do you get or whatever going around on certain facebook groups and so something like that like have you traveled to an event? How many states have you played in? I mean, the win does have some that are kind of cool. Like the how many venues and states that you've played in achievements are cool. Um, there'd be a trophy that's like big spender. If you if your constructed team, your 300 modern like constructed team ever broke $1,500 in value or something like that, which definitely happened in 2018 with all the ID cards. But you know, I think like a cool achievement is like, you know, if it was like this was like a real video game and it would uh, a way to not track it it's like like get you know roll two three crit misses in a row or three crit hits in a row uh you know win off mission points i a game um weird like weird fun achievements like have a common kill uh ultra chase yeah like, that'd be funny <laughs> you know like like go zero things like zero that. in a game yeah roll off in the finals at worlds <laughs> 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 I'm uh, no comment. I'm there could be, uh, yeah, there could be. We okay, should actually, yeah. uh, not us, but somebody, somebody who was willing to do the work should uh, start a website that's just that just tracks achievements like that. I, I don't know how it would work. I mean, it'd be like yeah. either honor system, or you'd have to have like somebody else verify. But some video proof, yeah, honor system or not, like video proof, someone else verification. Uh, thank you, Bill. Mandalore McCall says, how many drinks does Simeon have to consume to tolerate Calder when they record? Simeon, what drink number are you at right now? I'm at three, but it's three? noon, so it's coffee. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've had three like, cups whoa. of coffee today. Uh, yeah, nice. Normally, when if we record on like a Sunday night, because I have to record the next day, I don't actually drink too much. I'll have like a beer. Um, I will say, there's there's been times we've recorded where... I've gotten a little toasty by the end. You, oh, can, tell, you can tell my brain isn't quite functioning perfectly towards the end. I'll say, like, during, like, set reviews, I feel like, man, 
through this honestly uh luke goes on to ask again what objects are you most looking forward to building with ag again in silver age uh venom harness i yeah. love venom harness can't wait to build with that bad boy again in silver yeah that is pretty fun man let's see there's a lot of objects that i just straight up did not use uh, i am looking forward to Mudman making a return um the Joker's Wild gas canister. I can't remember what it was called, but uh oh yeah. The yeah, the Joker's gas canister. It gave you I think let's see, it was attack and damage plus 1 with battle fury and minus 2 to your defense value. So you took a minus 2 to your defense value but got a plus 1 to attack and damage. The other thing was um when this object is KO'd as part of an object attack, you may attach the Joker gas marker to the hit target. So you could actually hit an opposing character with it, give them Battle Fury, and minus two to defense. Yeah, they got plus one attack and damage, but, I mean, you could do follow-up attacks, or if they were ranged base, you just kind of nerfed them real quick. It's pretty cool. Yeah, dude. That's going to be awesome. Like, number one, big bonus, Silver Age. Let's not talk about ID cards. Um, but, but <laughs> at, I just, ah, man, those old objects, I just love building with. Um, yeah. Then Bill goes on to say, since it appears that Silver Age is going to include ID cards, uh, how much do you think this will affect sidelines? Trouble alerts, trouble makers will still be in this format after rotation. You're going to need space for ID figures as well. Will this cause swap teams to be less viable? I think it means swapping isn't main thing of the team it's like i can swap into this character like i think the swap team is going to become i'm specifically putting these people on the board to get this like putting like birthday deadpool on it and then it's like okay we got his tokens now i will specifically swap out to a different person you know right it's better for the points that's like better yeah. than Deadpool. i, I, I will say i think there's certain sideline elements that are just much better than id cards um i don't think I do think that ID cards could still be really disruptive in silver. Um, I don't know if we'll see like the same ID battery teams. Cause one of the big things about IDs was that you could call somebody in, you could just have like a team of like support characters, call somebody in, bump their attack and damage up. Now it's a lot harder to bump your damage up. I think we'll still see if ID cards are available, we'll still see the uh, like title Harley utilized um and we'll see some stuff like that i don't think people will fully sideline their team with id cards though because even calling out uh the xavier school like cyclops one of like the most popular id cards um i think the wolverine because his uh what was it inspiration just automatically heals anyone he's next to um I think the Wolverine will be used, but that Cyclops is just an 11 for three. There's not really an easy way to boost his damage. He does have eight range, precision strike, psychic blast, and leadership and stuff. Um, I don't know. I honestly, I mean, I can see myself potentially putting like one or two key things on ID cards on the sideline, but I don't see builds spending like the... 30 points that they used to spend on ID cards and taking up sideline slots. One of the worst things about this uh, is X-Men swap uh, with the headmasters. I think we already talked about it last week, but um, you get, so it's during the, force construction. You may include one student ID on your force without adding its cost man. and then swap them away. And you just have that ID for free now on your sideline. Yeah. So X-Men swaps that don't have like a Moira headmaster or a Cyclops headmaster will be kind of bad builds. That'll be like an easy thing to include. Yeah. Oh, gosh, X-Men. I mean, X-Men have been you know, popular for years, but geez, there's so many freaking, there'd be so many good and viable. Just too much X-Men. We got too many freaking X-Men. Mm -hmm. mutant. I get tired of these mutant Definitely style. Do. Yeah, I I could honestly a D card sure like they they are gonna take up space and everything, but uh, you really only need like two or three. You know, I'm like a D card call in heavy teams. I it it depends. 
Like, well, same thing with Trouble Alerts, Troublemakers. What do you, you need? Black Vulcan, like need Black Vulcan, and the rest you can sort of pick and choose. I I've never delved too much in with the other ones, but like, you know, at least what one Troublemaker, one Trouble Alerts. That's two. You no, know, it's gonna change sideline, but it's just sort of gonna depend on like what the team is built around. You know? Yeah. Some yeah, teams if I'm making a ton of attacks, sideline. maybe I want Trouble Alerts instead of ID cards because ID cards still take an action away from you. So if I'm building a team that has a ton of attacks it's probably more beneficial to use like the trouble alerts and troublemakers for those sideline slots because those come in at no cost like yeah they can be scored but they come in at no cost whereas i have to pay for the id and then i also have to use like probably two actions for calling in and activating the character nah, but i don't know you know like Sure, like people are still worried about actions back then. I don't think we're any more or less worried about actions now, more so. Like, yeah, it is still it's it is still a waste of an action. It is still like gonna be a choice you have to make. Do you think yeah. we see a resurgence in or not resurgence, but do you think we see um sideline sentinels being <laughs> played more often if if uh no. X Men start getting played because it's uh, for all characters with this trait, if they hit with three attacks or two attacks, so if they only hit with two attacks with X Men keyword, it's a lot easier to bring in that twenty five point three click in cap piece to damage. Oh no, uh, get at no, we ain't gonna see no sideline set. No, <laughs> no. Uh, they sh really should have had three damage up top. That's eh. Oh well. Yeah, I should have. Shouldn't have to start all the way in your starting area. Yeah, that too. Be rough. Aerial deployed sentinel. Just drop it in from the sky. Yeah, that's what it should be, man. I mean, come on, they've done that before. Just drop those bad boys down wherever. Robots, just dare drop them. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, last question here. Really cool question. Uh, don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry. Uh, Doa care. Do Doi care. Uh. If you were going to pick proxy dials for Star Wars characters, which pre-existing dials would you use for your two favorite Star Wars characters? Uh, I will go first. Um, my favorite Star Wars character is Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Probably a lot of people's favorite is him. I'm specifically going to go with uh, A New Hope. I know, it's like, wait, what? You're choosing the old man Kenobi? Yeah, darn right I am. Uh, I'll be going with A New Hope <laughs> slash probably Kenobi Show Kenobi. Uh, in that one, I chose the... Actually, I won't tell you who this is. I'll just I'll describe the dial, and you tell me if it's like fits Kenobi, this version. So he's got Stealth, top dial. Uh, first two clicks, Stealth. First two clicks, Precision Strike. 17 Defense, Toughness, top dial. Special Damage Power that gives him Outwit and Shape Change. Uh, that, in my mind, is like the, the Jedi Mind trick, you know? Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, that's like that's his opening, and then he later goes on to some combat. He's only got two damage the whole dial. He's got some combat reflexes, got some in cap. Um, the part that it, like doesn't really fit him that well is it has a uh, his character. What is his alter ego? Has an alter ego, so his speed power for his last three clicks is like, in, oh, it's Steve Rogers turning into Captain America. This is the Captain America Winter uh, Soldier okay. zero zero nine Steve Rogers from the Captain America Winter Soldier movie set. But no, I like it. Like, stealth, yeah. precision strike with a lightsaber. Combat figure. Toughness, That's from the part when he, he faces off with Bucky, and he's like, Bucky, yeah. if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you can imagine. Right, That's exactly what happens. That yeah. scene. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Simeon, you're first. So, you're I didn't go style. with my quote-unquote favorite Star Wars characters, but I went with uh, two of my favorite villains from the series. Um, so the villain I went with, uh, was Grievous, <clears throat> one Ooh, of the villains. Okay. So, okay. um, you might know this character, but, uh, traded flurry, got charge, triple target, traded flurry and exploit weakness, uh, special attack power doesn't really matter, but yeah, he's got charge for the first three clicks, super senses for the first three clicks, goes on to close combat expert and combat reflexes. Uh, but yeah, that's. It's Shang-Chi from the War of the Realms series. So I like this guy. I think Grievous okay. just makes a ton of attacks. Um, you could technically use the Incapacitate, but I, yeah, I think the Exploit comboed with Flurry 
really says grievous to me. The the three targets also because of all the arms. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I like it. All right, solid. Solid pick, solid pick. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Three of attacks, three day of penetrating, triple target. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's like when he does a little saw blade, a little fan yeah, saw blade. Yeah. Whatever noise it makes. Uh, next up, uh, I chose. I I mean, I have probably other favorite characters, but like the only one that I, I really really enjoyed. I love. People don't like me for this, but I love the design of the new stormtroopers. I don't okay, think they're goofy. Yeah. I like I like how smooth they look. I like like they look cool. They look awesome. I like the helmet. I like it. I love the new stormtrooper design. So when I was watching uh, Rise or whatever the heck Force Awakens, uh, traitor the guy that yells traitor. So that's that's traitor. him. This is his yeah. traitor. This is this is his dial here. So he's got three clicks of charge. He's got three clicks of combat reflex. He's got two damage. He's got eleven attack on those first three clicks. Then he goes on to some flurry blades, willpower, outwit. Dial, but he's got a special attack power which I think fits the little baton thing. Precision strike, blades, claws, fangs, but instead roll 2d6 and choose one as a result. Uh, this is, of course, Citizen V from mm-hmm. the Captain America and the Avengers set. Uh, yeah. Cool. With Zemo version of Citizen V. I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, a little cheap 50 point dial. It's Stormtrooper enough to me. Aimed Stormtrooper. Seems solid. Fen 2199. Yeah. <laughs> We don't get a lot of backstory for that guy. I imagine oh. a lot of people were like, um, he must have been close to Finn if uh like he he like recognized him and yelled traitor and I was like uh, maybe it's like when somebody deserted they just like put his face up uh like in the barracks as like this is a traitor and so he just recognized him from like the poster or something. We don't really get like any information on like that dude, but yeah. Um all right, the other one I went with was uh, Sidious, good old mastermind, evil man. Again, I mean, it's hard to go through the Emperor, like go through like the, the original series or original trilogy and not think that the Emperor is pretty interesting. I think in the prequels, it's not as cool, but like Sidious is pretty cool in like the, the original series. Um so I'll just do the dial, and I won't tell you who this character is. I'll see if you can guess who this character is. Uh, 100 points, zero range, Mystic's team ability, special trait, uh, give a free action. If this character occupies hindering terrain, place them in another square of hindering terrain within six squares. And then a special speed power, that is, this character can use stealth, can use mind control as if they had a range of six, and when they do, they can use improved targeting, ignores elevated terrain, hindering terrain, blocking terrain, and characters. And then a special damage power that is perplex and probability control. Uh, the standard yeah. powers on the front dial is poison and super senses. Does this character sound familiar to you? I really hope this isn't like who I think it is. <laughs> I it, hope uh... it's not whoever you think it is, too. Oh, I... You say like complex, probability control, poison, super senses. I think of a very, uh, very goofy character from the first movie. I guess. <laughs> am I am I way off base in thinking that? Uh, this is a team and T character. I will say he he's doing like the same pose as um. That's like Rat King. It's like a Rat King yeah. guy. Yeah, like yeah. Poison? yeah Rat King. King yeah. From Team and T two, okay. the rare Rat King. So. Uh, yeah, he's got rats everywhere. I am everywhere. He can move through hindering as a free action uh, up to six squares away. I think he's got poison, which, I mean, Sidious doesn't really do a whole lot of fighting in the original series. That is like the the one that I meant right. is the original trilogy. Guess, is, this, is this guy in the chair? Is this the rat yeah, king in the chair? This is the is chair rat yeah. king, the old cool, creepy right? looking one. Yeah. Um, He's got phasing his last three clicks and then has regen on his last two, which is also a Sidious kind of thing where he can apparently come back from the dead-ish thing. Um, the outwit or outwit mid-dial, uh, perplex and probability control both seem like, you know, he's kind of a uh, like master working. chess tactician yeah. player, whatever he's you want to call it. He's working in the shadows. He's pulling strings the entire yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, so I think this style, like the stealth... Uh, the stealth, poison, and mind control 
um, kind of influencing people, the mystics damage, regen down dial, all that to me yeah. seems pretty, at least uh, original trilogy, Sidious kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. I like that. That's a good dial pick. I like it. Listen, probably just both just chilling, sitting in the chair. Dark side is moving pathways something, to powers. You could never dark run this side. Something, something, dark. something, something complete. Yeah. Oh, uh, goodness <laughs> gracious. Uh, it's a really funny video where it's like a really, really, like, roughly animated uh, Sidious. When after what happens after when he gets Return thrown the down the, the he gets shaft. thrown down the well, yeah, I think I've seen, seen that. It. I don't know if you sent yeah. it to me, but I think I've seen it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty good one. Uh, hey, all right, cool, cool Star Wars dials. That plus the uh, Boba Fett sculpt swap coming up. We got like yeah, Omar, I'm actually uh, making a Star Wars. Gonna set. try and get that started today. I don't know if I'll get it finished because right. it's gonna there's gonna be a little bit of um it's gonna be more intricate than most of the sculpt swaps i've done there's gonna be some additional effects and stuff going on but i'm gonna try and get it started filming today uh and really quick everybody if you haven't already checked it out yet go to our youtube channel subscribe to the youtube channel simeon's got a uh good good video up there (laughs) it's something right now it's sure something it goes to the dark side yeah speaking of the dark side it goes to the dark side of hero clicks it might have only uh, like I I pretty much only did it for Calder and my own amusement, um, but yeah, it's a uh, it go a little bit crazy, a little bit uh, too investigative. If anyone I, watches dude, it and has suggestions yeah. for other um, hero clicks conspiracies that need delved Dives. into, perhaps we Toon are. Clicks, the death and resurrection Ooh. of Toon Clicks, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love it. it. It's a good video. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's got a great, funny ending. It's, I mean, it's funny from start to finish. It's, it's a ride. If you, it's if you're unaware, with definitely a trip. All the, all the terrible things that is happening on Evil Bay, Clicks Bay here. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth it. Just checking it out. And hey, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the freaking YouTube channel already. We're making skit videos every month. Like hundred percent, it's the Patreon goal, and they got it. So we're making skit videos every single month, um, which is really fun. There's gonna be a lot of unboxings and stuff, of course, when there are sets worthwhile to unbox. Uh, and by that, when Disney Plus comes out. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> and we do gameplay. We do weekly gameplay. I haven't been able to get as much Friday night gameplay as I have, but I did do a, a pickup game that I was able to record, and then some other stuff. But yeah, after this week, there will be more like weekly gameplay. Um, at my local venue so hopefully you know all that stuff starts up but yeah check out the YouTube channel hello on all that stuff that's the show this week that's all I gotta say um, yeah I'll do a, a quick RIP to Scott Hall old Razor Ramon oh, yeah. um, one of the better wrestlers growing up uh, and sadly uh, I don't think he was even slated for Wave 2 or anything, so uh, maybe we'll get a, a Scott Hall or Razor Ramon because he is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, but yeah, rest in peace. And if you want some pieces, <laughs> geez, if you want some wow. some Hero Clicks pieces, like all those Golden Age sets that we've been listing off, the character you should collect from, you can check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. They've got some of the old stuff, they've got a lot of the new stuff, and then they've got... the the sealed, the booster bricks and cases and all that stuff coming soon. So check them out. Coolstuffinc.com. Guys, hard work pays off. Dreams come true. Bad times don't last. Bad guys do. Betrayals. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Okay, <laughs> hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic trails.